So last week, and it feels like many months ago now with all the E3 announcements and everything going on, you finally unveiled Rise of Iron after having no leaks whatsoever before. No leaks, really tight ship. <laughs> Nobody had a single bit of information about it, kept it close to the vest, and uh, here we are. Yeah. A lot of a lot of bothans were, were killed to, to let that out. But anyway, uh, no one was killed. No one, no one was killed. No one's killed. Uh, but Rise of Iron. Uh, if you introduce this to us to us first, what's the what's the quick pitch here? What are you doing with this expansion? Yeah, so Rise of Iron is a big expansion to the Destiny universe. So we wanted to provide players with more content. So we've seen uh, a lot of success with April coming on the heels of the Taken King, mm -hmm. but we wanted to take the opportunity to explore some new uh, story campaigns, story missions. We've got a new zone to explore for players to go out there and have fun new activities. It's really just all about providing tons of content. So it's got raid, it's got new endgame stuff, new gear, sort of all the things that players been asking us for so mm -hmm. just a great opportunity also to introduce uh, Lord Saladin and the history of the Iron Lords and sort of deepen the lore a little bit uh, we know players are interested in finding out what happened to those guys why are they so cool and how do I get a, my hands on that axe and their armor and all that fun stuff so yeah it is interesting because the game has been out for a couple of years now it's, it's sort of it's <laughs> it's grown it's expanded yeah. you know possibly in ways that you weren't anticipating and is, is this this yeah. is uh, is this sort of the, the culmination of sort of reactive game development to sort of see what fans want yeah it's definitely a new model for us right coming out destiny we knew it was going to be a new thing right it's basically an, an action adventure game that changes over time as players tell us what they want to see more of and so uh, it's cool in that way it's flexible and it's malleable um, you know, I don't know if it's the culmination. We still have some ways to go, but it definitely is going to feel like the best of Destiny. Our goals for with every new expansion and new content drop that it's the best it's going to be. So I think we got a lot of good feedback on the Taken King. We got a lot of good feedback on April. Game feels more generous, more rewarding. The action game is is hitting really hard, and so I think it's time for another uh, a campaign moment, some more story for players. Yeah. Mm. Is that is that a sort of a ca conscious choice to sort of go with bigger updates now instead of sort of focus more on those and, and those beats? Well, we're still doing both, right? So we're still supporting the game under the hood. So uh, we just had an update go live this week. Uh, we'll have more coming in the, in the future as well. So we're not going to lose sight that people are still playing and engaged and spending a lot of time playing with friends. So mm -hmm. we want big content drops, big story moments that feel really impactful uh, and really move the world forward. Um, but we're also going to keep supporting in between. So it's always going to be the finding that mix, right, is, yeah. is going to be really important for us. And it's, it's something that can change over time. Mm -hmm. It, it is interesting, that sort of community aspect, and of course that is key to your work, what yeah. you're doing every yeah. day. Uh, so does, how do you sort of keep them engaged? And at sometimes, and, and trying to bring people back who may have stopped playing, because yep. obviously Destiny was a huge hit, it was a huge, big, big release, and players who tend to like big releases, they tend to yeah. buy other big releases and play something else for a while. How do you sort of, what do you think it is about Rise of Iron that sort of could, could get people back in? I mean, number one, having the new story. I mean, mm. that's going to be really important. New story campaign is uh, something that speaks to just about everybody, right? We've been telling stories since the primordial era, right? To, uh, so seeing Saladin, the axe, the new location, the new raid, I think there's something there that's going to draw a lot of people back in. And of course, you know, the live game, our goal is always to give people stuff to do if they want to keep playing. But if they want to take a break, or if they want to go out and play other stuff, that's totally fine too, right? We play a lot of games, so our goal is not to like, capture everyone's time indefinitely. It's to provide these great experiences. And if you want to keep playing month over month, that's fine. If you've got a lot of friends playing, that's great. We love it. We, pl we play a ton. I've got like 2,200 hours in myself. My wife plays a ton. Um, so I'm playing, you know, weekly. Other people only come in for the story moments, and that's totally fine. Uh, it is interesting with that, with that what, what you said about uh, playing weekly. How do you sort of make sure that there is content for every sort of player? Because, I mean, the, some players will run through a raid in, in just, you know, within the first 24 hours, yeah. while, while others will never see the end of that raid. Yeah, I think it, there's kind of two different approaches there. One is to provide different types of activities. So we do have story content, we have endgame raid content, we also have competitive multiplayer stuff, or just patrols, exploring, collecting gear, you know, the, the sort of things that you can do uh, on a routine basis. Um, and then, you know, there's there's uh, a bunch of stuff to do for players if they're looking for rituals. So we have things like Iron Banner or Trials of Osiris, the Prison of Elders weeklies that kind of refresh the experience and mm. kind of take the content that's there and put a twist on it, you know, different rewards or uh, different varieties of that activity. So that can keep you going. If you want to play a couple times a week, there should be something new for, the, for you there at each reset. Mm. 
what kind of things are you saying about that raid? Are you are you revealing anything? <laughs> it's fallen themed. Uh, it's actually set in the heart of the plague land. So this is a uh, new space that's uh, addition and expanding the Earth destination. It's the first time we've ever really done that. Uh, and it is the culmination of, of the deeper story lore that's with the Iron Lord. So through the campaign, you'll learn what happened to them and who their enemy was. This uh, technology called SIVA, otherwise known as Ironsbane. And they've sort of incorporated themselves into the fallen devil splicers and taken over this area of Earth. Uh, but the radio will go deeper into that lore and deeper into the destination itself and find out what the true source of the, the SIVA lies and you'll battle it directly. So, and The plan is to roll out everything at once with Rise of Iron or, or do you have a, like a roll up with it? Or Yeah, the, the core content will all go live on September 20th uh, on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One and then there's some follow-on ritual stuff so uh, we want the raid to hit pretty close to launch but there'll be uh, all the stuff that players expect uh, following as well. So we like the approach with Taken King where there was a nice tale of content, mm. stuff that keeps rolling out and keeps pl players happy, gives them some additional stuff to do. So you can expect that kind of thing to happen again. Mm. And it kind of makes sense from a story perspective to for players to have experienced that before they take on that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it gives them a chance to go out there and hunt for some new gear and get their legs and get their bearings in the world and find out why it matters. And it also helps us line them up so they can all have a fair start. And everybody gets to sort of, you know, set the date on their calendar. We'll fire the gun and watch the race. Yeah. You mentioned gear there. And I think if we take story away as motivation, I think gear and leveling up and sort yeah. of progression is perhaps the, the second most important and for, for a lot of players, the most important part of it. Uh, I noticed that you're you're uh, having the Jeller horn come back in uh -huh. a new shape. What what yeah. what what can you tell us of the gear and 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 how have you sort of gone about creating that new gear? Yeah, so we want to make sure that there's that nice climb through the levels for players to so the light, and they can go out there and collect new gear. Mm -hmm. uh, the Gallarhorn was obviously a, a beloved weapon. It's very powerful, and we thought it was a really good time to bring it back. It makes sense thematically with the Iron Lords, and it's mm -hmm. something we wanted to provide through a quest, so players, any player who wants it can go in and grab it. And if you want the black and silver version, you can pre-order. Um, and then you've got a whole bunch of other uh, gear that you can go out and find. If you look at the trailer, we have uh, a trial set in there. We have, uh, you can see the SIVA theme set in there. There's an Iron Lord set and that's just sort of the tip of the iceberg and so what we want to have happen is you know players make the climb through the content they find new gear that they love they equip it they look to become more powerful and then in fact become an iron lord themselves but then once they get into that end game and they're sort of going out there and chasing the things that they want to do in the activities then there's this kind of wider pool of gear that they're kind of selecting uh, based on what they want to look like so they can change their appearance that was a big bo uh, big win for us in april as we were able to take uh, the landscape of gear and sort of widen it for players, give them a lot more opportunities to sort of select how do you want to look, what perks do you want to go after, as opposed to just trying to inch their way up through light, you know, and sort of where it felt really grindy. Uh, April and beyond f feels really nice, feels really generous, feels really re rewarding, and allows players to sort of choose what they want to, you know, how they want to appear, what kind of power fantasy they want to achieve. So that, that feels like a really good balance for us. It is that interesting thing that I think all MMOs have encountered as well, that yeah. Once, once players have leveled up and reach a certain level, they kind of tend to look a little bit the same because everyone yeah. wants to max out. We had that year. moment in Destiny where you, you came out of Crota's End uh, back in December uh, last year, you know, and everybody kind of like stumbled out and was like, hey, we all kind of look like the same guy, right? And so, yeah, April did a lot of work, Taken King, of course, as well, mm -hmm. um, to bust that up and make sure there was a lot of variety in gear. We want players to be able to wear their accomplishments, you know, in their armor and the weapons they have, but we also want them to be able to just mix it up and be who they want to be and personalize and customize the gear. If we take a look inside of Bungie these days, what, how, how is the team that, that works on Destiny and Rise of Iron compared to the team that started out working on Destiny? Is it, is it the same size? Has it grown ever since? Or are you sort yeah. of starting to, to split up? Yeah, we've definitely grown as a studio to support the, the live game and to build more content for players. We've heard the call. People want more stuff to do in the game. Um, and we've take some, taken some steps to sort of make sure we can build things like Taken King and Rise of Iron. So that's about creating teams. So this team's helmed by the game director, Christopher Barrett. He's been at Bungie for 16 years. He was the art director on the original Destiny. So he's got a lot of good ideas. And uh, he's a lot of fun to work with. And and the uh, EP is Scott Taylor. So these are the guys that worked on House of Wolves as well. So mm -hmm. kind of putting the band back together, so to speak, and, uh, and letting them have another turn at it. So we think people are going to dig it. All right. Uh, you, you already mentioned the release date. Yep. Rate, rate on that. When's it coming out and, and what platform? Yeah, so Destiny Rise of Iron is going to be uh, coming out September 20th this year on uh, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. All right. Thank you so much for your yeah. time. Thank you. Appreciate it.